So it's nice if you can suss out like how people act and, and the human condition and how people are. Useful, but you need to know what to do with the information and that's math. It has to be both if you want to be a high level player, it has to be. So I figured it was a good opportunity to study today. I haven't done any paired for a while. We can play some King of the Hill, get some challenges in. Uh, we can start with raise first in, that's fine. Ooh, ace nine on 15 beebs. 15 beebs, eight handed. I think, damn, I think raise? It's raise only strategy on 15 blinds here, down to ace four, okay. I thought there was gonna be some jamming there. Bold. I don't think we wanna jam this hand. Well, we can't even jam it. Uh, and raising, it's like too strong, so we just limp call here. The jack seven suited. Limp call. And then we jam the offsuit aces and then a few suited connectors, small pairs. Nailed it, 100%, let's go. We are 60 blinds deep here. Um, call. Yeah, this is a spot I think that's really easy to screw up chat because you're 60 blinds deep. Things are different when you're 30 blinds deep. You get three bets, 60 blinds deep. And you actually have to call a lot here, right? So I think that what often happens is you adjust based on the player pool, right? So for a long time, people didn't three bet enough. In which case you would just fold a lot because when they three bet, they had the nuts. But when you're playing against good players, like they can three bet a lot of hands here. And if you just fold all of your stuff that opens, like they can just three bet you relentlessly. So this is actually the green is actually the calling range, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, you got to call a lot of three bets. King eight suited, they jam. Holy smokes, raise jam for 40. We fold. Yeah, we call jacks and then a bit of tens. Ace king, okay, makes sense. I'm not really sure what I want to do with this. Four betting all in is a mistake. I think it's not the right thing to do with a6. I think ace5, ace4, four bet jam is standard, but like I think that's a better choice than a6. I think I'm going to call here. Yeah. We actually don't even, we don't go for the jam with ace5, ace4 on 40 blinds here. We just jam jacks, tens, nines. A little bit of this king jack, uh, queen jack, ace king, ace queen. I'm definitely ripping in these ace5s, ace4, so I, I'm a little wide there, I think. We just raise call king seven suited, raise call king jack offsuit, uh, raise call ace 10 offsuit. Like, I don't think people are doing this cutoff versus big blind, you know? Like, I think people are folding too much in here, uh, definitely folding too much in here. Yeah, and then probably jamming a little bit too much with these pairs, I would say. And then I'm also jamming this, so there's an example of where I'm jamming too much. Uh, raise three bet, four bet. All in with queens. I don't think queens are a great hand to call here. Let them realize their equity. I think we're just all in, you know. If we're going to call a hand, we'd rather call with aces. And then, yeah, even, like a lower pair, like tens would be one that I would think. But it looks like they want to do it with jacks. Uh, king nine suited. Call and three bet are fine, but I'm going to three bet. Yeah. Aces. <laughs> okay. Nailed it. Boom. 100%. Dude, we're two for two. 20, 20 in a row. Let's go. Squeeze and quiz. All right. Ace four suited, raise, call, squeeze, fold. We're 30 blinds deep, fold. Yeah. Call ace 10. A lot of these hands are already three bets, so it's a weird looking range, but raise, call. I think we call here, actually. I don't think we squeeze this hand. I guess we're gonna squeeze it a little bit, but. Call and fold, yeah, okay, there you go. I mean, I'm not really thinking about folding this, but we're gonna half call these suited connectors. And the squeeze is like pretty linear, you know? That's that's like a takeaway from these squeeze spots to me. Call here. I don't think jam is right for 60. Is that mostly the squeezing is just linear. Call this three ways, I think. I think it's a good, like, you know, there's going to be some jam. But I, I like the call with aces, especially with how much money is in the pot here. It's like, in, in reality especially, there's going to be 25 blinds in the middle. They have 28 and a half. They're going to have to see bet in this squeeze pot almost all the time. It's just a good spot to call. Uh, 40 blinds deep. This stack is awkward. Like, we definitely continue at 60 blinds deep, and we definitely don't at, like, 25. I guess I'm going to call here. We fold. Yeah, we start to call fives a little bit, six a little bit, sevens a little bit. It's a it's a tough. It's Yeah, it's tough. Um, fold. 30 blinds deep. Tell me this is a fold, dude. Thank you. Ooh, 60 with the queen jack suited. I want to do both. I'm not super happy. I would probably call 60 blinds deep, but like, I'm not happy here. It is the worst queen we call. Yeah. Okay. 86. This is fine. 
out of position post flop. The toughest spot, dude, out of position post flop. All right, so raise we call. Yeah, so it goes raise three bet call. Ace high board. Damn. Ace high board. We can bet one quarter. Or check. I guess we're going to bet. I don't know. I guess we're going to bet small. 100%. We're against under the gun. This is a pretty condensed range, but we kind of have a pair. We're not going to be able to get the showdown with this hand, and our range is stronger. And we are just going to exclusively bet small range because that stronger range. Yeah. Okay. Button cut off. I'm assuming it goes raise call here. Raise to 2.2 call with the blind, seven blinds in the middle. And they bet 1.8. King, king, 10. Damn. Damn. See, this is a pretty bad hand, right? Like, we'd, we'd rather continue with ace, queen, ace, jack, queen, jack. Like, maybe queen, nine. Oh. We ran out of time. I forgot we had a timer. So it says mostly call. I was thinking about folding there. But yeah, dude, this range is so wide. That's the thing. You got to think about how wide this range is. We just continue with these pairs for that sizing. Okay. Well, we timed out. I was going to get it wrong anyways, I think. Raise three bet call. Ace nine three. Small bet. Yeah. Kings. Raise call. King, queen, queen on the flop. Small bet or check. Yeah. I think the small bet is good. Small bet range. Cool. Raise three bet call. Eight, seven, five board. Do we want to go with the small sizing or do we want to go for some big sizing? I think big sizing. I think we probably check some because of the broadways here. No, still just small. And we actually do check 41%. I'm, I'm always missing that. I thought it was going to be big sizing in check, but I'm wrong. It's small sizing in check because we're short. That makes sense. Pre raise call and then the flop, it goes bet, check, bet, raise, call. So bet, raise, call and the flop turns a five of spades. I mean, I guess I'm just going to bet call here. Bet small call. I guess it's fine. Yeah, I mean, we're in such a niche. We're in such a niche moment here. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm going to do. Raise call. Ace, queen, three on the flop with two hearts. Uh, check raise, get it in, I think. Yeah, check raise small 86% and then call 14%. Okay, that's fine. Ace, queen, nine. The button calls. They're going to have some ASEX in this range, but I would say we have a range advantage here, so we're going to bet. Uh, we go for mostly big bets. Ooh. This is <laughs> this is not an easy spot. Uh, uh, fold seems crazy, I guess. Ten eights of spades. We're just calling these, uh, these spades. I guess we're folding queen five of spades here. Yeah, with the spade. Oh, no, wait, that, that's the wrong one. 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. With the 8 of spades is a call. Yeah. But what about 9, 7 with the 7 of spades? Still a call. Yeah. I mean, all right. Overfolding there. Raise call, 4, 4, deuce on the flop. Yeah. Big better check. We have a lot of stuff that misses in the broadways, so we got to do some checking. But 9, 8's a pretty good hand to bluff, right? We can fold out a lot of their broadways. So yeah, we, we bluff this, and then we check or big bet this stuff here. Cool. All right, 61. I mean, it's tough, dude. This is the toughest. Uh, out of position, sizing and all that is tough. GT also work in cash games or are designed for tournament poker? Yeah, no, it, it works for cash games too, right? Like, what it's finding is a fundamental baseline. So... Let's try and come up with an example here, right? So this is this is an example where we take sort of these pre-flop ranges, right? So this is the range of of in position. So this is the person that raised in the middle of the table, right? Middle position. And this is the range that is like a GTO range, right? This is the range that is fundamentally optimal if you're playing computer versus computer. This is going to be like the median range, the one that you play. Now, like you're going to play against people that don't play this range, you know? Like, you're going to play against human beings at the casino that don't open King-6 suited in middle position on 60 blinds. So does that therefore make this useless to learn from? No, right? You, you learn the fundamental as to like, okay, here's the theoretical range. And if you know you play against opponents at the casino that don't open this, well, then you can, you can adjust. But you have to know where the baseline is to adjust from, right? So this is the range in in position. This is the range out of position and they're never going to be right, right? Like you're not going to play any humans that play this exactly perfectly. But if you understand what the standard is, when you know people are playing tight, you know how to adjust against it. When you know people are playing loose, you know how to adjust against it, right? When you know people aren't three betting this middle range, 
you know they carry more of this range to the flop. So it's really useful to learn from. And so here's like what a, an output will look like, okay? So on this board, we have queen, jack, four. Uh, so in this example, we raised a middle position, the big blind called, and we're now to a flop, and the flop is queen, jack, four. We've got a bunch of different flops here, right? So you got a bunch of different flops we can look at. These are just like some of the solves. You can run this solver through the evening and you can come up with these outputs and then save them on your computer and you can use them to study so that when you play a hand, you can find a similar hand. So like if I raise in middle position, I go to a flop, I'm not sure what to do. I can look at this, right? So queen, jack, four. This is the big blind. And as we can see, the big blind never leads, right? So like what, you know, how useful is it going to be to to learn this strategy. Well, if we're playing against someone at the casino and they lead on a queen jack four, how might we think about that? Uh, well, we know that they shouldn't. We know that they're deviating, but that doesn't mean like, oh, you lose. Like we're still trying to win the money in the pot, right? <laughs> like that's, that's the point of the game. But if they lead here, what does it mean for us? Well, we might actually just have to fold when we have like, you know, king seven suited. We might just have to fold to a lead. You may think like, oh, we got owned because they did something the solver wouldn't do and they got us to fold and like they win. But what happens when we have a good hand and they lead with king seven, right? You have to view it in like all the permutations of like not just when you have one hand, but when you have your range, right? And they might win more money if they decide to lead and they get us to fold king seven, right? So they beat us. They beat our king seven if they take the strategy, right? They, they beat the solver, but no, right? Because we also... We also have queen jack. And so when they lead here, when they shouldn't, yes, they win more money out of king seven, they get it to fold, but they lose a lot more money against queen jack because they're inflating the pot, right? So they can win tiny battles, but they never win the war. And that's what is complicated about thinking about a solver and thinking about a strategy because we play poker in individual instances, but really what's happening is it's a range versus a range. That's, that's really what's happening in poker hands. We're living life in moments, but the strategy of poker is range versus range. And that's, that's why it's useful to learn from, right? So, okay, we raised a middle position and look what happens here, right? Like this might be interesting to know, okay? We're playing a tournament. We raise a middle position. The big blind calls. The flop comes queen, jack, four. They check. There's not a single hand that we can, we can check here. We have to bet every single hand. Every single hand that we decided to raise, we need to bet. You tell me if you're betting every single hand here. I'm waiting. They're not. I like you go to you go to the casino. Is is every single person betting pocket threes here? No. Are they betting six five suited here? No. They're betting ten eight suited here? No. Like they're just not. You know, they're just not. So they're making a mistake. And this is something you can learn from. Say we're playing against someone that we play against a lot, and we know that they don't play like this, right? They don't understand the solver, they don't play like the solver. And we know that they're not gonna bet all of their hands, right? They're gonna check some hands, and they're gonna bet some hands. So let's say that they check on the spot. What is their range gonna look like when they check? You know, what sort of, sort of hands are gonna check from them, what sort of hands are gonna bet? Then we're gonna be able to understand and visualize in our mind different parts of the range, and how, you know, uh, We'll give them this, let's, let's say they check, right? And then the, the turn comes like the seven of diamonds or something. We're going to be able to pick apart some of their strategy by thinking in our head about what hands are left in their range, likely, you know? It looks intimidating, right? This is scary. There's a lot to, to think about and deal with. And a lot of it is just complicated as to like sizings as well. It's very difficult to like wrap your brain around. It's still difficult for me to wrap your brain around different sizing choices because essentially... You're choosing sizings, different sizings in, in spots to try and make the most money, right? That's your goal. But sometimes you're choosing sizings that are like four times the size of the pot. And the reason you're doing that is to make the most money with your value hands. And you may be thinking, well, it's like no one's going to call four times the size of the pot with your value hand, right? Like if you, if you go 4x all in jam almost everything's gonna fold. So like you, you snap back into human thinking of like, what am I gonna do against the human being? You know, you go into exploit land of like, what's the most I think I can get them to call. But in a theoretical sense, it's like, if you have a lot of bluffs in your range, you go for a bigger sizing and you size bigger with your value hands and bigger with your bluffs. So you make more money from your value hands and your bluffs balance the value hands so that your opponents have to call sometimes. And if they fold too much, 
then you pick up the pot disproportionate amount of time you make money there. And if they call too much, then you make a bunch of money because they're calling too much and you're raking in money with your value hands. And if they call, if they do it just perfectly where they call and they fold the exact percentage, then we break even. So essentially like we construct our range in a way where you can't beat it. You know, if you play perfectly, you're going to break even against our range construction. Now it's obviously very difficult to get to that sort of equilibrium right to to devise that strategy in the moment and players the best players in the world won't deploy that strategy they'll try and deviate based on human nature and like people's understanding of poker but like that's high level poker